Hello Year 6 transition students, my name is Mr Avery and I'm the Director of Learning for Performing Arts at Chobham Academy. I'm here today to talk to you about what to expect when you study drama at the Academy. Let's have a look at some of the things you'll be expected to do. At Chobham Academy you will have one hour of drama a week. All of the lessons are practical, interactive and engaging. Over the course of an academic year, you study six different topics, which you can see on the right hand side of your screen. There will be many opportunities to showcase your work and your talents, and this may be in lesson, in an assembly or even at a talent show. Um, as well as lessons, there are lots of enrichment clubs happening, which take place on a Tuesday and Wednesday, which we would love you to get involved in. Furthermore, uh, there is the whole school musical, which is the you know the biggest event on the on the performing arts calendar, um, and it's an excellent opportunity for you to be a part of something special. If you like to act, sing, and dance, this could be an excellent opportunity for you. So, first off, as a performer, there are two main tools available to a performer, which are essential in the successful delivery of a character. This is the body language and the voice that you use. And throughout this lesson, there's gonna be a number of opportunities for you to practice these different techniques, which will then equip you with the basic skills to start your drama journey. First off, let's look at body language. Now, body language is communication by movement or position, particularly facial expressions, gestures, and the relative positions of a speaker and listener. Now, this may be the message that you are conveying to an audience or to other characters, but it adds layers of meaning to the words that you are delivering. Now, you may come across body language being referred to often as non-verbal communication, which is absolutely right. And if you're wondering how powerful body language can be, consider how often a text message or a phone call can sometimes be misunderstood. This is because the listener doesn't see the facial expressions or body language which the person is using, which then could convey the mood of the speaker. Now below, we have three main situations which you might be interested in when describing the body language. The first one, for example, in a script, you will often have the director's notes. Body language is an important part of knowledge that help a director um, you know, confirm and communicate to the actor how to best reach the performance of that role. It may be a case of he raises his hands in a menacing way or she runs and jumps. Okay, those sort of directorial notes help communicate. Uh, secondly, we have the actor's interpretation. So an actor can decide on certain gestures um, to help communicate their character to the audience. And then finally, it's the analysis and the evaluation. And often in drama, we always look at work and evaluate. Now, when analysing performance, body language is something that should always be mentioned and you should always write about this uh, when you're asked to in maybe a self or a peer evaluation. Okay, Year 6, here is your first task. On the next few slides, there are different types of body language being communicated. And I want you to have a go at creating these different types of body language to help show your emotions. The challenge is, can you take a picture of yourself showcasing each emotion and share it with friends or even with me? Okay, next we're going to look at proxemics and space. Now there are several different elements which can be incorporated within a performance, um, which often help to communicate different things. The first one, levels. If you wish to show your dominance over someone, you will probably have the person in authority at a higher level. Now that means visual um, status can be shown. For example, you could have a king that was stood up um, and below the king, on a lower level, may be knelt, may be the king's servant. Closeness is also important, as there's usually much greater intensity when the characters are close together. We often call this proxemics. 
And again, the distance shows how intimate characters are with each other and also form part of this proxemics. So for example, if you had two uh, students who were pretending they were on the playground and they were far away from each other, this may show a distance between their relationship. Posture is the position of a person's body when standing or sitting. For example, a soldier would stand upright, but a drunk person may slightly slump. And then finally, how the characters use their space, um, what I mentioned earlier about the, the distance between characters. Now, what I would like you to do is to watch this clip of Romeo and Juliet performed by the Royal Shakespeare Company. I want you to consider how they use proxemics and space in this famous scene. Okay, next, it's important to recognise that facial expressions are so important when communicating your body language. When you're evaluating performance work, uh, you can always look at every aspect that contributes to the effectiveness of the performance. And this includes being able to describe the facial expressions that the actors have used. There are differences in the way that actors use them on stage um, in comparison to when they are being performed to a camera. But for example, when you are always performing on stage, the facial expressions you need to use um, may need to be slightly exaggerated in order to fill the space effectively. The expressions, just like body language, may be heightened, as I said, or exaggerated, so that it's clear for the audience to see how the character is feeling. Okay, year six, here is your second task of the day. I want you to have a go at simply pulling these faces. But again, the challenge is, can you take a picture of yourself showcasing each face? Can you share it with friends or can you even upload them? Imagine you are trying to show it to someone right at the back of the theatre, so you need to exaggerate it as much as you can. Next, we're going to move on to gestures. Now, gestures are a really important part of the drama medium. These are often included with movement and mime, and the most significant gesture that we use is hand gestures. Now, the wagging, for example, or the pointing of a finger with accompanying words like I have told you time and time again that this behaviour is unacceptable. It's probably among the most familiar of all gestures. They tend to work as emphasis. There can often be more subtle gestures, uh, arms out, um, as if you're about to hug somebody, but when you're using the gesture to embrace a crowd of people, you can say welcome. So gestures are any additional things that you do. It could be a hand on the hip. It could be a point, it could be a scratching of the hand, of the head, sorry. So it's, it's all there to help communicate to your audience how your character is feeling or what they're trying to do. Now we're going to move on to the voice. The voice is the second most powerful tool you can use in drama. When you describe vocal work, you should always consider elements such as pitch, pace, projection and intonation. Don't worry, we'll be coming on to the definitions of these in a moment. The voice helps to show how the text is interpreted for the audience. Think about situations which you're solely reliant upon the voice, and body language may not be seen. For example, uh, a phone conversation or a radio play. The listener is solely dependent on what they hear. These are some of the different words we can use to describe the way an actor uses their voice. Many actors begin their interpretation of character by finding a suitable voice, and here are some of them. First off, we have pitch, which is speaking in a high or a low natural voice. Pace is the speed at which someone speaks, for example, the speed of response in an argument. Pause. A dramatic pause at a crucial moment could merit a comment. Tone it suggests your mood and your intention towards the listener, whether you're speaking in a happy or a sad tone. And volume, you might be commenting on the audibility, but you're more likely to be discussing the effect of how loud or powerful or even quiet, nervous or sad the voice is. We then have accents, and you may be talking about how someone has achieved a convincing accent or how the choice of accent enhanced their characterization. Emphasis, the pressure on individual words that makes them stand out. You can emphasize or stress for particular effect, and it is significant and can change the meaning of a sentence as well as the feeling behind it. And finally, intonation, which is the rise and fall of the voice within a sentence or a speech. There's a clear movement up and down within the sentence, and we can ask questions, for example. Intonation helps us to say what we mean. 
Okay, Year 6s, here is your third task. I want you to try reading the following out loud. However, I want you to try and read it out loud with a variety of different ways to explore how you can use your voice. So for example, let's look at tone. You may decide to perform this and read this out loud with a sarcastic tone. Let's have a look. Hey, you're new here, right? It's okay, don't worry. <laughs> I'll be your friend. Come on, what's your name? My name's Jamie. Where are you from? It's okay, you don't have to tell me. But if you don't, then how are we supposed to be friends? As you can see there, I used a slightly sarcastic tone. Another one, you can use emphasis. Have a look at that. Which words would you place extra emphasis on to create impact? I can spot quite a few, but let's have a go. See where you can spot the emphasis being used. Hey, you're new here, right? It's okay, don't worry. I'll be your friend. What's your name? My name's Jamie. Where are you from? It's okay, you don't have to tell me. But if you don't, then how are we supposed to be friends? Have a go. Explore using pitch, pace, pause, tone, volume, accent, emphasis, and intonation. So, we're now going to move on to your main task and your homework for the summer. If and when we come back in September, because obviously at the moment we're not 100% sure, but many of your first lessons will be based on the book, The Boy at the Back of the Class. This is a story about how one ordinary nine-year-old child and three classmates are full of empathy for Ahmed, a boy that comes to their school as a refugee from Syria, and he is the boy at the back of the class. And this is your final task, Year 6. Your task is to write and perform a monologue, which is a speech from one character to an audience, from the perspective of a refugee child who is new to a school. I want you to think about how you can use your body language and voice to communicate how your character feels. This will be needed for your first lesson back, so please make sure you have prepared something. So, just to clarify, I'm asking you to write, and perform and record if you can, that's your challenge. But if not, just to write and learn your monologue, exploring how you use body language and voice to communicate your character. You're writing from the perspective of a refugee child who is new to the school, so you need to think about how you are going to communicate your character's feelings to the audience. As I said, your challenge is to record your monologue and email it to me before we come back. Welcome back Year 6. I really hope you enjoyed that lesson which was just a small insight into some of the things that you'll be expected to do when you study drama at the Academy. I really hope you enjoyed it but if you do have any questions please feel free to email me at j.avery at chophamacademy.org.uk. Furthermore I'm really looking forward to watching some of your video submissions of the task today. Have a great day and I look forward to seeing you soon.